Consistently high unemployment numbers, the growing national debt, and a bleak future outlook, they are all fueling protests and unrest linked to the U.S. economy. But some brand new polls show that more people blame Washington than Wall Street. Here to help us break it down are the pollsters, Adam Geller and Bernard Whitman. All right, gentlemen, let's start with that very first poll. I mean, you look at who's to blame for the economy. D.C. gets 64% of it. 30% say it's all about Wall Street. Adam, do you think those numbers uh, are accurate? Well, I do think they're accurate, and, and I do think that it really speaks to the foolishness of the left and the Obama administration sort of embracing the blame uh, Wall Street type of thing. I mean, they're, they're basically, you know, targeting the 30 percent, uh, and they're ignoring uh, the vast majority of people who say the federal government deserves at least some of the blame here. Bernard, what do you think? I mean, Wall Street, 30 percent. I would have thought it was higher, but people are plenty well, mad actually, at Washington. <laughs> Shannon, there's a, there's a lot of blame to go around. If you look further into the details of the poll, you'll see that just over half say the federal government deserves a great deal of blame, and just under half, 45 percent, say Wall Street deserves a great deal of blame. And I'll tell you why. Another interesting fact about that poll is that six times as many people say that corporate CEOs have hurt the economy rather than help. 53 percent to 9 percent say corporate CEOs have hurt the economy. Virtually everybody, 86%, say Wall Street has too much influence. 71% want to see those responsible for the Wall Street meltdown prosecuted. And at a time when median income is down, corporate profits are at record highs, it's no wonder that two and three want to see millionaires, multimillionaires who have gained the most in this economy, pay a few cents more in every dollar to fund a jobs program to put people back well, to work. Bernard, Bernard, you're misreading a couple of things here. I think that the point is, is that nobody is saying that Wall Street deserves no blame. What you're ignoring and what the Democrats are ignoring is the amount of blame that the federal government is getting. Now, even Democrats are split on this. I mean, forget about Republicans and independents who both agree strongly that the federal government deserves much of the blame. Democrats are split. It's only the Occupy Wall Street supporters, 26% of the entire sample, who just by a, a slim majority thinks that uh, Wall Street is more to blame. In other words, Bernard, what, what you're ignoring is the fact that even Republicans are saying there needs to be some reform, but there can't be this incredible overhaul on, on Wall Street because what, do, what is that going to do? It's going to hurt banks, it's going to hurt lending, it's going to hurt business, and therefore it's going to create even higher unemployment. There's a big problem here. Now, do, does, do we need reform? Of course, but we also have to overhaul the federal government. All right, let's look at yeah, a couple of other numbers. Well, and, well, hold on just a second, Bernard. I'll throw some other numbers out and give you the first uh, pass at these. These come from an APGFK poll. Uh, Obama stating with the public is weakest on the economy and in his efforts to tackle unemployment. About 6 in 10 disapprove of how he is handling that. Uh, but in light of that as well, with the, all the animosity at Washington, Congress's approval rating, rating stands at 16%. Right. So who in Washington is going to pay more when it comes time to vote, the president or Congress? Well, I, I tell you. I tell you exactly, it is Congress, and specifically it's the Republicans in Congress. If you look at that Fox News poll, the only people that get more blame than corporate CEOs are the Republicans in Congress. They believe, people believe that the Republicans of Congress have done more to hurt the economy than President Obama has, than Democrats have, than unions have, and it's no wonder. They, uh, they played all these politics with the debt ceiling, cost our country a stellar rating, uh, really created a lot of havoc on Wall Street. Then they stonewalled the jobs bill, a jobs bill that two-thirds of Americans support. Because of that, it's really not a surprise that, frankly, the Occupy Wall Street movement is double that in favorability of the Tea Party, and 59% of people who have heard of Occupy Wall Street agree with its goals. The Republicans in Congress are, are absolutely bent on one agenda hey, item, and that is to hey end President Obama's career. And I'm sorry, Bernard, that is costing the well, American but, public but, confidence. No, he's, he's, he's going to end his own career. Nobody knows what the Occupy Wall Street goals are, including Occupy Wall Street. And the thing that's most determinative of the 2012 elections is President Obama's job approval rating, which is 42 percent, right, which gentlemen, is terrible. We got to leave it there. We thank you always for a spirited debate. We hope you'll come back <laughs> soon. Thank you both. Thanks, thank Shannon. You, Shannon. Take care, Bernard.